afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Steve Ruffley. I'm going to be taking this webinar this afternoon. We're going to be talking about trading and probabilities. Um, so th for those who haven't read my profile, um, I'm a fairly experienced trader. I've been trading markets for some years now. But I've also got the benefit that I've risked some of the biggest traders in the business. And I've also managed one of the biggest trading pools in Europe. So when it comes to trading, there's, uh, there's plenty of experience there. And hopefully, we can address things from a slightly different angle and, you know, uh, just really explore trading and the, be the, you know, the ways we can benefit from the way we approach and we, uh, we attack the markets. So before I start, I need to read a risk warning. Now, spread betting and CFD trading both carry a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment. These products are suitable for all investors and are only intended for people over the age of 18. Please ensure you're fully aware of the risks involved and if necessary, uh, please seek financial advice. Okay, it's educational only. The content of the webinar is the personal opinion of the moderator and not intertrader.com. Content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. You're advised to discuss your specific requirements with an independent financial advisor prior to entering any bet. Intertrader.com is not responsible and disclaims all liability for the content or comments during this session. Okay, guys, talk, trading in probabilities. Now, when we talk about spread betting, by those very words, um, this can imply that we're gambling. So if you want to be a trader, uh, this can't be fur further away from the truth. We have to approach the markets in a very controlled manner, very easy to get caught up in the emotions and to do things reactionary, when really it's the exact opposite. We should always know what we're doing. We should know where our stop is or our stop's going to be before we put the trade on, and we should know some way where our exit point is going to be. Again, it's all playing to the strengths. It's all the things that we should be taught, you know, to be really disciplined before we press that button. You know, we need to know all the variables before we get involved in the market, and we have to deal with noise and the different bits of information that are coming, and the fluctuations that are always going to happen when markets are trading. Especially at the minute, we've got such high volatility that if you jump into a market without really knowing where you're in should be or you're out should be, you know, it's very easy to get caught up and, you know, a winning trade can become a losing trade very quickly without you knowing the reasons why. So, obviously, when we're trading, there are elements of risk. Now, managing these, these elements of risk is a key to your success. So, really, what I say to all traders I've taught over the years, have a plan. You know, stick to your formula and learn from your mistakes. Repetition is one of the fundamental things in, in trading. When you're doing things right and it feels good, keep doing it. So, again, if you haven't got a trading plan or a trading log, it really is something you should look to implement. Everything we do, you know, in our entire lives, we do and we learn from. So if we don't know what we've done, how are we going to be able to learn from it? So, you know, it sounds quite a simple thing, but even some of the top traders that I've worked with will keep a basic log and be able to see patterns in the trading, you know, patterns for when they're winning, patterns when they're losing. And these are all the things we can, you know, look at and we can, uh, you know, can, we can really kind of help ourselves and identify what's making us a good or bad trader. So, okay, there's three main steps for making trading work for you. So, in trading, there are generally a lot of things happening simultaneously. So, the key is to concentrate on the things you can control. So, I mean, you can't control, you know, what comments are coming out of the markets. But what you can do is you can control, you know, that you've read the economic calendar. You know who's due to be speaking that day. You know, what the ECB people saying. You know, what's Ben Bernanke? What's the Fed saying? Who's going to come into the market and say things um, that are, are going to change the direction of what we're trading? So again, I mean, we all know about the economic figures that are coming out, hopefully, each week and each month. But it's just as important that we know about the speakers. Uh, again, the, the speaker before made a great point about people know what's happening in the ECB. And people know um, the likelihood of what's going to happen. But, you know, we, we still have to wait for the decision makers, the people in power, to tell us. You know, to tell us that, you know, that the banks are, are safe, that they're going to be propped up. And all these things, again, are opportunities for us, us to trade. So the main point one is preparation. You know, what are you going to trade? What are your levels? What's your bias? Are you in tune with the market? So number two, what are your expectations? Where are your outs? Okay, where do you expect the market to go? So, yep, so again, what another key point I've picked on over the last few months is, because the markets have been so volatile, people keep telling me, well, I keep getting stopped out, Steve. You know, what's the best way to not get stopped out of a trade when I'm right? So what I'd say to them is, well, with the market conditions being so volatile, if the market is generally moving 2, 3, 4%, you know, you have to trade less and put your stops wider. You know, if there's more people involved in the market, less size, therefore the markets extend further, you have to put your risk strategy and your stops accordingly. So maybe a year ago, you could trade with a five-tick stop. Right now, 
very, very difficult. You might be looking for a 10 tick stop and build into positions, you know, positively average once you've found the right direction in the market. So again, that's just another practical approach of, of hitting volatile markets. Another one is quite underrated is point three. How are you feeling? Now, I don't know if you attended my uh, training seminar on psychology, but it's a really underrated thing. Uh, how are you feeling? You know, are you set to win or are you just hoping? Are you confident? You know, what's happened in the previous week session, month sessions? Are you down money? You know, do you need this trade to work or is this, you know, playing with profit? All these things can affect the way you feel and how you, you look to trade. And again, it's only by taking these emotions out and sticking to your plan that the probability is that you're going to make more money from trading. Yeah? But again, very, very, very simple points, but very powerful when you put them in place in the right way. So preparation. Now, as we should all know, you can't just log on and trade in these markets. Yeah, there's some key things you should always look at. What's happening in the currency pairs overnight? All right, $4 trillion is traded every day on the FX markets. Okay, so that's going to have an effect. You know, we're trading, you know, in, in the UK, the, the FTSE, for example. What's, what's the pound on? You know, what's it, what's happening, uh, you know, the Asian markets in the US? So again, check what's happened in these, in these markets. You know, when the UK markets, European markets are closed, you know, the US and the Asian markets are still very busy. So again, ask yourself questions. Did the markets move as you expected? As everything turned out and, you know, what, what we thought was going to happen? You know, are we in tune? with what the markets are doing and their opinions. So another key point in preparation, open your economic calendar. See what data is coming out today. All right, what do you expect for the market today? Are we going to have a big range, a tight range? If it's the day before non-farm payrolls, we're going to see people positioning or we're going to see a tight range, people waiting for the figure. You know, again, if we've got a, a, a big trading range the day before, we're going to see some consolidation. Look for things like inside bars, inside candles. You know, again, look for previous highs, previous lows. All these things, if you you know, it, and these things can take minutes to do, but you know, again, they can give you something to aim for all throughout the day, and all through you know, throughout different points of reference, maybe figures, previous highs, previous lows, or your kind of technical indicators. So all these things are going to make you prepared, and again, make make it probable that you you know you're positioned and that you know you're, you're rightly prepared for what's going to come out in the market and how to attack things when they do come out. So again, if you're trading technically, what are your levels? What are your targets? Yeah, and weekend analysis really important. You know, again, the markets are closed. You've got two days to sit back. Hopefully, you're not holding positions over the weekend. And again, powerful. You can sit back. You don't have trades on. You can reassess your trades, what you've done, what you, what you're expecting to happen in the next week. So again, very, very important because Monday always sets the tone for the week. So when we talk about weekend analysis. What you can do is, as we've said, you can look at the past week's trading activity, not from just yourself, from your own perspective, for what the markets have done. So you shouldn't be holding overnight positions. You know, if you are, then, you know, obviously you, you, you're at a quite professional level uh, or you've got a really strong opinion. But what, what this, again, allows you to do is look for the week ahead. Plan around all the things that are going to make the markets move. So look for your central bank speakers. Look for the people that are making policy decisions. Yeah? Look for the figures that are coming out. Don't just look at the little figures, look at the big pig figures, because these are things that you know you need to do. Okay, so other things we need to look at. Is it a bullish or bearish stance? You know, what's going to change the outlook? You know, always be firm in your opinions, but allow flexibility, because again, we could be in a big bull market, a big bear market, but we can see fluctuations. You know, is this just profit taking, or is this fundamentally a different view? You know, is the market direction changing? So put a slide in scale of importance on things. So again, whatever you've traded in the past, figure-wise, whatever speakers you've listened to in the past, yeah, all these things, you know, if you've made money, watch out for them. Because we've been trading with probabilities and trading with things that generally work. Just keep doing the things you've got confidence in. Right, so I've got a few questions coming through. I mean, we're going to have time at the end. Um, but, you know, I'll just see a few popping up. So I'll just, uh, just have a quick look. So I said in the previous webinar, you trade the bond markets. Could you tell which charts you use for this? Um, I tend not to trade uh, the bond markets, to be honest. I'm generally indices, uh, so the FTSE, S&P, and DAX. Um, so I can come back to that later on. Uh, but no, generally, I, ch I trade indices, so maybe you've got me confused with somebody else. So point one, an overview. So you can say that if you've done 80% of these points, you're generally prepared. Okay, so remember, we're not gambling. We are trading. 
So if you've done your preparation, it's almost like you've earned the right to trade. Now, I'm not here to tell you how to trade. That's entirely down to you. You control um, that you, when you press the button. You know, you control what you trade, how you trade, and what size you trade. All I'm saying is, over the years, if you ask yourself a bit of self-talk and you have a bit of a checklist, and you say, right, okay, I've done six out of them ten points. You know, I'm happy with that. I think I've got a good opinion. I know what's coming out. I know what has happened over the last few days. So yeah, I'm ready to trade. You know, once you've done these things, you know, you're already a step ahead of the competition. Because, you know, it is such a fast-paced moving market to the minute. And, the, the, you know, the, the moves are so aggressive. That if we're primed for them, we're not surprised by it. And this is where we can capitalize and make the most out of trades. Very easy, you know, to press the button and get in. Uh, but it's very difficult to manage and take the maximum profit out of a trade. I mean, how many times have you guys got out of a trade and within 10, 15 minutes it's trading 20, 30 ticks higher and you said, well, I know that was going to happen, but for some reason I've, I've banked some profit, which is never a bad thing. But again, with the, with the extent of the moves and with, with the volumes that's in the market, we're going to see these extensions and overextensions. So if you've got your plans in place and you know where the level is, that you're going to get out at and the next level where it could go to. And you're giving yourself the edge, you know. You're in a better position to know when to get out for maximum profits. And again, easier said than done, but the more you do these things, the more you build it into your trading uh, strategy and how you, know, how you approach the market, the easier it is not to jump out of profits when you're just on side and to let them ride. And it's not being greedy, it's not being arrogant. It's just taking the most of what the market's going to give you. There's different techniques. You, know, you can scale out a little bit and let the rest of your profit ride, or you can positively average, um, which is you buy more into an onside position. All these things you can adopt when you've got your plan in place and you know where the market's going. And again, this is what's going to make your winning trades much, much more profitable and in general make you a much more successful trader. So point two, exit. So putting a trade on is sometimes the easy part. You know, The real art of trading is, is where you get out. Okay, so this is where trading probabilities comes in. So what has the market done, right? So if the market yesterday has moved 4%, what's it likely to do today? You know, what's your expectations of the daily range? What's it likely to do? So if the market yesterday moved 200 pips and, you know, you're looking to make a 10 pip move, you know, are you really looking, for, you know, for, for enough profit out of that move? You know, what are you risking? What's your risk reward on that? If it's a 10 tick stop, you need to be working at at least 2 or 3 to 1. So you want to be making 30 ticks. So you need to build that into your planning. Okay? So what is the trend? You know, are you going with the trend? You know, are there more buyers in the market and you're thinking, yeah, that, that's a good position to be in. I'm going to buy these markets up. Or is, is the trend bearish? You know, are people selling? So it's very easy to say, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, well, I'm, I'm a counter trend trader and I go against it. And that's fine. But when you're trading in probabilities, the trend is your friend. Go with it. Okay, if more people are doing what the other side on one side than they are on the other, you might as well be with the majority. You're going to get the momentum, you're going to get the volume, and ultimately, you know, the moves are going to go quicker on side if people are doing the same as you. Okay, it might sound a simple point, but uh, you know, again, these are the things to look at. You know, if you use your indicators and you use the, um, you know, your strength indicators, your MACDs, and all your momentum indicators, you're going to know generally if you've caught the back of a right move. So again, have you traded these levels before? You know, what happened when you traded these levels? Other things, if you don't keep a log and you don't keep a record of good levels or things that have been successful for you in the past, how are you going to remember them a month later? You know, very, very difficult. So we say trading in probabilities. This is a prime example of, uh, you know, an upward bullish trend. We go from uh, a low side, a uh, level of uh, support here, uh, down the bottom, and we've got a quite a nice trend channel. Uh, again, trend channels are very underrated uh, tool. Very, very simple in principle. They're just two parallel lines at a good angle, um, 45 degrees generally, that mirror each other. So if you're trading in probabilities, you know, you can, again, be a counter trend trader, and you get a lot, one, two, three, four, five good opportunities to sell. But again, you know, go with the, you know, go with the trend. If we're going to go up, then what we do is we look for any times we break through. So just here, you know, we start to come through our, our level of support here. So we find some good support and bang, perfect trade. Market comes down a bit, but doesn't break out the channel. So it comes up, breaks out a little bit. Hopefully we're still long. So that doesn't matter to us. You know, that's just extra profit. But there's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, maybe seven good opportunities to buy this market and take very little risk on. So again, you know, look to buy low and sell high. You know, you've identified a level of support which we've not touched since we, we implemented our trend channel. So maybe, you know, we did our trend channel off this point, this point, this point, and maybe that point. Okay, so the mirror. So we never go below our level of support here. So all that really we're buying anywhere along these lines is profit. Okay? So six opportunities to take minimal risk and know where the market's going to go. Okay? So maybe we draw a midpoint in here. So that's our first level. So again, when we see the market come up here, just through the midpoint it would be. So maybe we get some profit out and hold the rest. It all depends on what kind of trade you are, how aggressive you want to be. But if you've got points of attraction and you're going with the trend and you've got one indicator for above our level of support, two indicators being our trend channel, and third, it's an upward move, that's three indicators, okay? We could add as many indicators as we want, our MACDs, our Bollinger Bands, anything else, but we've got three solid indicators that are telling us we should be buying at some point along this line. So, I don't know about you guys, but that's good enough for me. And then you're going with the momentum, and it all depends, you know, how long you want to hold the trades for, and how much you want to make out of them. But again, this has to be in your plan. Maybe you want to get out of the, the you know, some out of the midpoint, and then hold the rest of the trade to the top of the channel. Maybe you want to get it all out of the midpoint, or you want to hold it all. It doesn't matter. But as long as you've got three indicators telling you this is a good place to buy, and where you should be looking to get out, then really, you know, these, these are quite powerful things, and the three very simple things that you put in place, you're going to be able to make money from. So the trend is your friend, as I said before. You know, this is one thing for certain. You know, be it a sideways, bullish, or bearish trend, all markets will trend. So that means there'll be, you know, a level of resistance, level of support that, you know, the support buyers will come in, uh, the levels of resistance sellers will come in. So again, you know, it doesn't matter where you draw your lines in, as long as they fit in to the overall trend and they've got some sort of, you know, some sort of balance. So when it comes to, you know, the example of a bullish trend, you know, what's the most likely outcome? Yeah? People are going to be buying. So the downward levels, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, just look for the most obvious levels that other people will look for. Because this will give you strength. If you're doing the same as other people, then that's called momentum. You know, that is the market sentiment. So it's all great, you know, being a, a counter trend trader or a swing trader. But, you know, if we know that there's three indicators saying it's a bullish market, so the majority of people are going to be buying, then that's the side we want to be on. Okay? So people are going to sell for profit. Or, okay, or they're going to look for slight downward moves for their entry points. Yeah, and these are the pullbacks you're going to see, as per the previous graph. It comes down because people are taking profit or looking for a short. So the momentum, yeah, is bullish and it's going to go up and we don't get anywhere near our levels of support. Yeah, that market's going to continue. So that's another entry point. As people are getting out, if you're already long, you just get more in and push the market back up. Yeah, so don't sell. If you've got the overall bias, buy it all the way up. Don't try and be too greedy. You know, use the probability angle that we're trying to trying to look at here. You know, if the market's strong and the market, you know, is being bought up, then don't try and go against the market. You can pick the old top or bottom, you know, as the perfect exit, then maybe double up and sell down. But again, you know, do we have to be that greedy? If we look at that example, you know, that might be it might have been an hourly or daily chart. That's six positive, straightforward buy signals that we can get in and take as much profit as we like. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, if we get five out of six of them trades right, that's going to be a good trading session. We're going to have made good profits. And that's what it's all about. It's looking for the probable outcome and sticking to it. You know, if we start deviating from the rules and trying to overcomplicate trading, you know, you get caught up in the noise and you start to doubt yourself. If you've bought that market three times in a row, what's the probable outcome on the fourth? You're going to buy it and it's going to go up. And you're going to have the profit in the bank that's going to give you the confidence. And you've got the probable outcome backing up what you thought. I've identified X, Y, and Z. I've got three entry points. This is exactly the same what happened the last time I traded. So I'll buy it. And these are the things that will give you the confidence to stay in trades. Now, when the markets are like this, as I've said, if you can stay in trades and take out, you know, the top of the move or near the top when people, you know, because you see people take profit towards the midpoint. If you can just fight through that and learn to let that build into your trading plans, when you see people come in and take profit, recognize that, 
and maybe you know put more into your trade or you know identify that is people p taking profit and the move will continue your trades are going to be much bigger your winning trades will be bigger okay so very key in these markets I see a lot of people um, getting out of these points thinking the market's turned and it's not so if you can control that and you can go with the probabilities because you know where the top end of the range is you're going to be a more successful trader so we have to remember the uh, you know the, the probability principles right it's really really imperative that you know we remember that the, the trend is our friend okay if you have identified that it's bullish then always look to buy yeah your only selling points should be you know to exit your trades to get out you know we can't be greedy we can't buy and look to make profit and we can't sell yeah to make profit you know our selling has to be where we take our profit so again if you found a downside level and it's you know you've got the confidence you're on the side get the most out of it you know hold it as long as you can and average in so I'm just getting a, a question coming through now which is quite timely so how do you add to your positions well it, again it's quite simple if you're say you know say we're, we're long round about here yeah the market goes up and comes back down so we could buy here buy here it comes back down to level support and continues to go up when I say positively average or add to your positions all that means is putting bigger size into the trade you've already got on so if you're trading a two lot for instance you can let that trade go on side 10 ticks and maybe it'll come back two or three ticks maybe it'll just be in a little tiny range if you think that's a little level of support and the market's going to continue you can buy another two lots yeah to average your position so that means you know you'll come a little bit closer to where the market's trading but you'll have twice the position on so instead of two lots you'll have four lots or whatever the monetary value is and then again if you think the market's still right you'll hold a bigger position that will go to the top of the range and that's where you're going to get out so again you've taken on very little risk but you've used your onside profits to um, to be able to you know maximize where you're going to get out the trade so again it's just another way of managing positions if a trade's going to move 50 60 100 ticks and you're 10 ticks on side you know how do you make the most out of that you know that that difference well the, the way you make the, mo the most out of it is by managing your onside position maybe you have to hold it longer yeah but uh, maybe you know you have to put more size into it but ultimately if you're right as again if we've traded this two or three times before you know you don't have to put big size on to start with if you think you're right you're probably right so get more in at slower increments when the market back you know comes down a little bit then maybe you know again as I said we're profit taking look for a good level for, for support and as people have took the profit they want you start buying back in and then the market goes up again yep so you've averaged in where people have got out so you're continuing to hold an onside position with more size so that really is now we could talk about negative averaging but again that is, that's the opposite and it's a little bit more difficult to kind of control in these markets but I would say that if you are onside it's not being greedy but if you've got a good idea where the market could go to and you've got the available capital there's nothing wrong with positively averaging and when your trade is on side using that small amount of profit or that momentum to put more into the trade and get it out for a bigger profit so point three as I've said I mean how are you feeling it I don't want to make this sound wishy-washy and I don't want to get you know into too much detail here but there's certain characteristics throughout the day and um, you know we all have things going on in our lives and it might sound obvious but you know the better traders you know uh, the people I've taught and you know things I've learned over the years they ask themselves these certain things okay they're asking themselves do I feel confident today you know I'm having a good feeling about today you know don't confuse that with arrogance you know it's just you know am I feeling good have I done my prep am I looking you know am I looking to make good profits you know are you alert you know, did you have a good night's sleep? You know, the kids playing up, you know, etc. All these things can, you know, can change your trading state. Little things, have you eaten? You know, what's your blood sugar like? I mean, you've got to remember, sometimes in these markets, they're, they're a battle. So you've got to, you know, be feeling fit. You know, you've got to be ready. You've got to be alert. And all these little things, you know, can, can, can add up and give you the edge. And again, have you traded like this before? Okay, you know, is, it, is this the way you felt before? Have you been in the zone and you're feeling in the zone again? again it's very very difficult to, to kind of put the message across but you know we are all individuals and we're trading the market which is built up of individuals so if you're in the best position and the strongest position and you're feeling good about yourself 
and you're feeling good, you've got your capital, you know, you're pretty sure where the markets are going to go, you know, that could mean that the, the next guy you're trading against, you know, he could be based anywhere. He could have a terrible night's sleep, he doesn't know what he's doing, he's on his last trade, he's got his last £50 in his account, if he loses this, you know, his wife's going to leave him. You don't know. And that's the great thing, you know, see, it's not about people screaming in pits and on phones anymore. It's all like we are now. You know, we're sat in front of a, a screen, you know, all we've got is ourselves, our, you know, our graphs, our charts, our opinions, and, you know, we're the one that presses the button, you know, we're the trading machine. So, again, all we're going to do is make sure that we're running the best of our ability. And these are the little things you can ask yourself. And if you're not feeling great, and you don't want to, you know, maybe just put a little bit smaller size on. You know, maybe sit back, you know, have a cup of tea, give you time, you know, give yourself time to wake up. You know, again, over the years, I've met lots of people that couldn't trade in the mornings. They just weren't morning people. They'd lose money in the morning, make it back in the afternoon, and maybe make a bit of profit. So when you see patterns like that, you know, over a few weeks, you say to yourself, well, why do you not trade in the mornings or trade small in the mornings and then go and make your money in the afternoons? So, you know, you haven't got that loss to come back from, yeah, and you're going to make double the money. And again, it's these little things. If you keep a log and you know how you're feeling, how you're trading, these are the things you can, you know, can build upon and replicate because so many things are going to happen during a trading day. There's no, no one on earth that can remember every trade they've done and why they've done it. It's a little exercise. It takes 30 seconds to do. And I guarantee it that you, know, you will see some correlations, some patterns. And even just you know, sitting back, looking over your trades, you can say, what was I doing getting involved in that level? That was a crazy place to sell or a crazy place to buy. Yeah, but you haven't written it down. You know, how are you going to know these things? How are you going to know how you are feeling? Yeah, all the things we can learn from. So again, it's like anything in life, you know. What we do when we talk about probability of trading, it's the probability of your success. It's not just about the trading. It's about what state of mind you're in, yeah, what you're feeling, what you're doing that makes you a good trader. And again, the more you can control these things and the more you can kind of self-analyze, and you can, we don't have to go into great detail, you know, this thing doesn't have to be, you know, a sit on the couch and, you know, be that, you know, an hour long session. You know, if we just look back and go, all right, well, I recognize that was a good trade, good trade, good trade. That one wasn't as good. Well, that ties in because, well, I was trying to do two things at once. I was sending an email, got distracted, didn't watch my positions, and, you know, something came out. But again, these are little things, and they can add up. You know, this can be the difference, you know, between 10, 20, 30 percent of what you make in a year. And, you know, these little things do add up. And again, it's only through seeing hundreds of traders do these things. I'm doing it myself and watching in the back room, you know, watching some, you know, some of the biggest traders trade away. And, you know, you can't help but pick certain techniques up on certain things. And again, when I'm trading on a, on a, on a floor, um, you know, in the one I was doing in London, it was very, very big. And you'd expect it to be noisy, but it's not. It's deadly silent because people have a lot of money and they're concentrating very hard. So the guy's screaming or throwing his toys at the pram or making a fuss. What, what do you think's happening to him? He's offside, he's underprepared, and he's losing money. Who's the quiet one? The quiet one's the guy on the side that's just made half a million euros and not saying anything. Closes his computer then and walks down to his Aston Martin and drives home. This is the reality of trading, guys. You know, This is the reality of what, what is possible in the markets. But you have to be prepared and you have to be disciplined. Yeah, and you have to do all the things that are going to make you personally, you know, a more successful trader. And it's all in your hands. Yeah, and nobody can see you do these things. You know, and nobody can see your trading environment. That's your little zone, and you control that. So again, we just need to make sure that we're in the right kind of frame of mind. We've got all the things around us that help us be a good trader. And you know, whatever works for you. Post-it notes, a little scribbling pad, spreadsheets, whatever. Yeah, these are all the things you can do to make yourself a better trader. So, just again, you know, try, try and take anything you want from this presentation away. And even if you only implement one tiny thing of it, you know, again, I'd be interested to see, you know, if it has helped you in any way. Because again, I'm only speaking from personal experience and things I've done for many years. So, probabilities and risk rewards. So, having identified your probable success uh, of this winning trade, you have to have considered, you know, your risk levels. There's no point, you know, making a thousand pounds out of a trade when you've been five thousand pounds offside. That just doesn't make sense. But other things you need to look at. Did you put sufficient amount of, uh, you know, a sufficient amount of size onto warrant that trade? If you're just using very small size, like a one lot or a pound bet, for instance, really, you know, what you're looking to get out, you're going to run that for a hundred ticks, make hundred pounds. You know, 
if you're really sure about a trade, are you using your capital sufficiently? If you've got £10,000 or £1,000 at your disposal, you know, why are you trading such small size? If you're confident, yeah, and you're going with the probabilities and you're prepared, then, you know, up your size. You know, trade size that's going to get you the bigger profits. Okay? So, again, could you have run the trades longer? All the things you need to look at. You know, have we got the most out of that trade we've done? Have we, you know, been on side by 10 ticks, used our levels, our rules of probability that it's going to go from the daily range 30, 40 ticks? You know, again, if we're taking out 10 ticks of the move, okay, granted, you're never going to go poor taking profit, but have we, you know, have we made the most out of that particular move? That might be the only trade of the day. If we've made 10 ticks out of it, is that enough to sustain us? Is that enough to keep us interested? Are we going to do a silly trade after that and give some profit back? Yeah, because we should have got more out of it. Or are we going to do the same trade, get back in and start breaking our rules just to try and chase the market? These are all the things that are characteristic of a lot of traders. We're just humans at the end of the day. But if we can take out that little bit, as I said to you, you know, we can help, you know, and, and save maybe 20, 30 percent of, of our losses just by doing these simple measures. So risk reward. Now, again, Here's how we can kind of, you know, put it in a betting sense, but then take it out of a betting sense. So if I came to you and said, I've got a dead sir, a tip and a horse, um, okay, it's going to win. So you put a £10 bet on. Now, if the odds are 10 to 1, and I guarantee it's going to win, then, you know, that's a no-brainer. Everyone can agree that's a worthwhile bet. So if I come back to you and say, what about 3 to 1? Well, a little bit less exciting. But then what about 1 to 3? So you're only going to get £1 back for every £3 you put on. Well, that's not so enticing at all. So it's the same principle with trading, okay? So if you've got your stops in place, if you're trying to make a thousand pounds, for instance, and you know what would your stop loss be? It wouldn't be three thousand pounds. You know you wouldn't risk so much capital in order just to make a relatively small amount. So really, you know, it's all about balancing your risk against what you expect you're going to make. So I mean, some of the basic mistakes of novice traders is they don't decide beforehand when they're going to be wrong. Now you can take the fear out of trading. You can put your stop in, uh, and that's taken out. So you're guaranteed to get out when the market goes against you a certain, you know, a certain amount. And again, these are things we need to look at. Maybe in the volatile markets, they're a little bit wider your stops. But if your stop's not in, the temptation, as always, is well, I'll just give another five minutes, or I'll just go another three ticks. Before you know it, you've lost another ten, fifteen ticks for no reason. Yeah, they get out of the trade, and then that's the point the trade goes in your favour, and you're out of the trade. Guarantee. Seen it a million times. Okay? So when Joe Punter puts his bet on, and he's put his £50, his £100 on, he knows what he's going to lose. The markets aren't like that, and we know this. For whatever state we put on, the, the possibility we can make that same increment on the upside is fine, but we're going to lose that increment on the way down. Yep? So th this is where it's different from betting. We're not going to finite loss, yeah, until maybe our capital is all used up, and the system stops us out. We don't ever want to be in that position. Yep. We're not gambling with traders. So people ask me all the time, you know, Steve, what's the correct risk ratio? I, I can't tell you. There is no perfect risk ratio, okay? You can read as many books as you like, go on as many websites, blog it. Yeah, it just depends on your strategy. And remember, you're unique as a trader. So you're so unique, you have to have your own strategy, your own risk reward. You've got to base it on your capital, base it on what you expect to make, yeah, and ex base it on your attitude to risk. Yep, there's no point to putting max bets on every single trade because you're gonna you're gonna run out of money. There's nothing simpler. Okay? So you've got to be a bit more proactive, use all the things we've talked about, trade with probabilities, you know, make sure your state's right, use your plan and only trade around them things. So minimum ratio I'd say has to be one to two. So you've got to be risking a thousand pounds to make two. That's gotta be your minimum risk. Okay, so translate into into tick terms if you're trying to make 60 pips, 60 ticks out of a move, then you've got to be, you know, you stop maybe 20, 30 pips, depending on how confident you are, depending on how aggressive you are. All right? But again, it's all down to you. It's all dependent on them three factors I've just mentioned. So really, to conclude, uh, there's nothing more certain in life uh, than death and taxes, should I say. So there are no certainties in trading. You know, trading is, is no different. Um, so... We have to remember, as always, we're not gambling, yeah? We're using our tools. We're using our tools, our analysis, our instinct, all the things that we've built up over the months or years to give us an indication of what the market is going to do. So this 
you know, again, you could say people read form in the horses, all that kind of stuff, but that's controlled by somebody else. Generally, the markets are free flowing. Okay, if you want to trade the FX markets, they're not controlled by anybody. They're just doing what the market says. So we can use intelligent analysis, intelligent tools, intelligent ways of looking at things and ourselves, yeah, and bet and trade accordingly. What separates us, you know, from from gamblers is, is the ability to risk manage, yeah, and use this to our advantage. So recognize when we're trading badly and stop. Recognize when we're losing too much. I mean, back in my early days uh, when I was uh, at uni. Um, I worked in a bookies, um, so you, you stand at one on on, on you know, street corner, and you'd see guys on a Friday afternoon, maybe they'd be you know down the, the, the down the shipyard or wherever they worked, but they'd come in with a little brown envelope of uh, you know of their wages, and nine times out of ten, you see these guys you know put the last twenty pound over the counter and walk home with an empty wage packet. Okay, so that is a gambler. You know we aren't anywhere near that. Okay, we're we're proper you know traders we look and manage ourselves in the way you know we, we want to be you know you might not be a pro but there's nothing to stop you acting like a pro it's completely in your hands and remember nobody's watching you the market doesn't care about you so don't take it personally all you can control is the things you do okay so again um, if we look at the most probable outcome you know you're going to do the same as other people you know the markets are to a certain extent self-fulfilling if you follow the trend, so will others. Okay? This will ultimately add to your trading success and the momentum of the trades you put on. So again, if we're going with what everyone else is doing, if we're looking for downside levels, yeah, we know the market's going to go up, we're going to find levels where people will buy and the market will bounce. You know, this is just trading with probability, trading with what we think is going to happen. Very, very powerful, guys. And um, again, hopefully I've, I've said some things that perhaps other traders or other people you've listened to haven't quite kind of you know come around to, to telling you. These are things you know I've I've learned over the years from, from very very successful traders. I've also passed this information on uh, to other traders that I've taught over the years and uh, people that I've risked. And it's, it's always been received well. You don't have to use it all. You don't have to be dead dead regimented. You know there is the freedom involved in trading. But if you do stick to a plan, you do recognise certain traits and characteristics in yourself. Overall, you're going to be a better trader. And again, all we got to do is look to the things we can control. We can't control the market, but we control when we press the button, how much size that is, yep, and where we expect to get out, and what we expect to risk. You put them factors together, you know, already we're becoming a lot more stable, a lot more controlled trader. Right, guys. Well, I've said a lot today. Um, has anyone got any questions on on this kind of on this kind of scenario, have you have you recognised already? Um, if, if anything you've seen or anything that you know you recognised in yourself that perhaps you do or don't do? No worries, Mike. I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed that. Okay, I think we had this question last time, Buki. Um, I, I'm used to being a professional trader, so I I didn't have you know stops. You know, I I had an overdraft facility type thing. Um, but yes, it. You can lose more than your initial investment, not your, uh, you know, not your initial um, deposit, should I say? Well, right, guys, anything else you'd like to ask? Again, like I said, I mean, my webinars tend to be a little bit different, but uh, you know, hopefully that's good for you guys. You know, let's uh, let's let's try and explore trading from from every angle. Okay, do I feel that brokers uh, differ significantly in the UK? Um, no, not particularly. No, I mean, every every broker, every company, every one you trade with has, has their edge, has their own way of making your profit. Um, so no, I mean, I don't know. So there's the honest answer. Um, Andy, uh, all these presentations should be recorded. I think uh, the last two have been recorded. So if you go to the usual place in FX Street, you'll be able to um, be able to re uh, rewatch this presentation. I don't think I can send it to a PowerPoint presentation, um, unfortunately, but it will be available for you to uh, to watch again. Anything else? Any other thoughts on the markets in general? You know what 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 are people thinking? How are you feeling? How's trading going? Anything anything I can help with?
Okay, well, the administrator's just come on, so we, uh, we've recorded this webinar, so you can have it, uh, you can watch, watch through it again tomorrow. Again, I mean, it's all about the tools you use, you know, by uh, anal an analyzing yourself, should I say. I mean, it's, it's very difficult, you know, to kind of sometimes differentiate a, a winning trade from a losing trade, apart from just the money. There's a lot of different factors that go into it. <laughs> How long does it take before you feel okay at losing? I'd love to tell you that, you know, there's a, there's a finite time and you start, you know, feeling good about losses. You're never going to feel good about losses. But what you can do is, the way I look at it, okay, if you have a losing trade, what I say is you're paying for information. Okay, if you've got your stop in, you've stuck to your rule, and it comes offside and you get stopped out, you paid for that information. At that point in time, your entry point was wrong and your opinion was wrong, but you paid for it. So at least you got something out of it. So that's the way I try and rationalize it. You're never going to feel good about a loser. But you're going to become a lot better trader, a lot more controlled, a lot more disciplined if you can treat a winner like a loser. Yeah, very difficult. Very easy for me to say, um, but very difficult to do. Okay, Mano. Yeah, they have the exact same strategies. All, the, all these strategies come from myself. You know, I was not the world's biggest trader, but, you know, I, I size and I traded big size. Some of the guys I traded with had enormous size. Um, so again, you have different problems with trading that way by being able to get size off and not affecting the market. But yeah, the, you know, the approaches uh, are generally the same. You have to have risk reward. You have to be disciplined. Yeah. And you have to play with what's, it, what, what's in the account. I mean, you know, a guy might have a million pounds in his account, so he can trade, you know, bigger size. You know, you might have 500 pounds in your account, and you have to trade that size. You know, again, these rules are just scaled up, but the basics never change. Never, never, never change. It's exactly the same. Okay. James UK. Okay. Are spread betting brokers, ECN, STP, or market makers? Um, you'd have to look at each company individually. You know, brokers are brokers at the end of the day. You know, they, they're the order fillers, uh, unless they're a market maker as well. They're generally two different things. The majority are just execution only when you're talking about brokers. If you're talking about online spread betting companies um, and you, you're saying that they trade the back book, some do, some don't. I'm not entirely sure who does what, to be honest. Um, again, I mean, it's all down to, you know, how that company performs. I mean, for Intertrader, they're just, you know, again, they're just a platform for you to trade um, against the market. They don't trade anything against your positions. Or anything like that. Manuel, what think about indicators? Uh, indicators are great. Um, it, it depends what indicators you mean. Um, the, the, for me, at the minute, the big ones are strength, uh, strength indicators, your RSI, things like that, and uh, your MACD, quite important. Uh, some sort of moving average, also critically important. They're the indicators I tend to look at. <laughs> well, that's great comments, guys. Yeah, um, I wish it was as easy as uh, as listening to me. Unfortunately, it's not. It's very difficult. I do do some live trading sessions. Um, currently, I'm I'm winning about seven thousand pounds off six live trading sessions. So feel free to join me on that. Um, again, I'll talk you through the trades, why I'm doing it. Um, very well, not easy for me, but I've got experience. I'm confident without being arrogant, and I know how to trade. So sometimes just watching somebody and talking through it can help you. Um, because there's nothing to hide, you know, I'm not a teacher as in such, I'm just somebody who's done this stuff for a number of years, and I will talk you through my trades, and I will tell you, you know, where I think I'm wrong, where I think I'm right, and again, 7 out of, of, of 10 trades have been successful, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm significantly up. So, again, I can only teach you from experience, I can only show you things live that, you know, have made me successful. Ooh, Mano, very difficult, very difficult, this current uh, economic climate. You have to be aware of the fundamentals. have to be, uh, you know, what will the news is coming out. You can't just be a purely technical trader. In the long term, you can when markets are quiet. But with the uh, market so volatile, you have to be aware of what the speaker is saying. You have to be. Otherwise, you're trusting to look, uh, I'd have to say, Mano. So very important. You have a squawk or, you know, you read what people are saying. Um, for, for the live trades, just go to intertrader.com, guys. Just um, just log on. Just log on. Uh, I, th I think you can 
do the webinars without opening an account. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I do two a week and two training live live training sessions a month, so you'll be able to find that. All right, guys. Anything else you'd like to ask? We had some good questions through here. I'm, you know, I'm enjoying this. You guys seem to be uh, pretty switched on. Um, I'm liking that. Uh, what's my source of news? Well, you can read the wires. Um, anything Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, Sky News. To be honest, uh, there's nothing wrong with Sky News. Again, there's different free um, free uh, squawk systems uh, that you can that you can sign into. Uh, I, I don't know one offhand to, to recommend. I know InterTrader use. Uh, 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 Ramveer Squawk, which is um, a guy I used to work with in Snyder's in London, a uh, very knowledgeable guy, been in the markets for years, um, so I, I could recommend him, I'd say. But just be aware, you know, again, whatever works for you, I can't tell you any great, you know, trading secrets, to be honest, you know, you have to learn these things for yourself and what, you know, what works for you, because what works for you or myself might be different from other traders. So, uh, again, find what works for you. And find what you know what makes you a successful trader. It will be different for everybody, but the basics are the basics. If you stick to them, you know, if you stick to your basic rules, you're going to get confidence out of this. And confidence, believe me, is the most powerful thing in trading. It really, really is. Can I type the news sources? Uh, yeah. There's... Oh, sorry. These are two big ones, Reuters and Bloomberg. You know that they're, they're, you know, again, they'll have their own news services. That you know, when you hear people quote things, they'll quote, you know, AP, Associated Press, or they'll quote Reuters, or they'll quote Bloomberg. And these are what they call the news wires. So Sky has all these. So anything big and massive that's going to come into the market will be picked up by Sky News. Mike, um, no, I'm not on Twitter, uh, unfortunately. Um, I'm on some other kind of different services. You, you can Google uh, my name, and some interesting things might come up, or, or may not. So you can you can, you can find me out on the web. Um, again, I like to do little. I like to do controlled scenarios like this, where we can you know talk about a specific scenario, a specific subject, and then ask some intelligent questions. Um, again, I don't really like people that give out free tips and quotes um, personally, because if you know. They were always right, and these people were keeping them to themselves and making fortunes. So at least this way, you know, I'm fully accountable for what I say. And I'm always on hand to answer questions. Okay, guys, any any other questions or anything you'd like to to ask? Um, and they, you know, I don't really trade FX as much these days, to be honest. I'm generally just the indices. I find them a little bit more controllable. So I like the you know the DAX, the FTSE. Um, the S and P. I generally trade S and P for non farm payrolls. Uh, some some of the other figures, maybe the DAX. Um, so yeah, I mean, it all depends. All personal preference. I mean, I'm I quite like fast moving volatile markets. Um, so the stock market kind of suits my personality and my attitude to risk. I mean, again, it's just they suit my my risk profile. They suit you know how I like to make money. Um, so I, I can't say why they're easier. They just work for me. Uh, you know, I've traded everything in the past. I've traded bonds, commodities, FX, sugar, coffee, everything. You know, you name it. But what I've learned over the years is, you know, if you stick to what the majority of people are doing, it goes back to trading in probability. If I'm trading with the, you know, the, the majority of the market and I've got a good sentiment, you know, again, the FTSE, very, very, you know, easy. If you're based in the UK, you read the FT or you read what's happening in the news. So again, you know, it's all, you know, it's all, all, uh, it's all good things for you to build up a picture. Um, do I trade for a fund? Or, no, I'm, I'm purely on account. Uh, I don't, I don't trade any funds. Uh, no, I wasn't on the live floor. Um, I was, I'm a little bit too, just too young for that. Uh, I have visited it though and had lunch there. It's very nice. So DAX is more volatile than the FTSE. Yes, it is. It is more volatile than the FTSE. Yes, but volatility is good, guys. I mean, we like volatility. Volatility and movement equals profits if you approach it in the right way. What I say about the DAX is that separates from the FTSE is slightly more expensive, but that's due down to the volatility. Then we think about it: DAX 30, 30 companies, so that can be shifted a lot easier than the FTSE 100, 100 listed companies. So another another little point to, to point out, you know, that's why the DAX is more expensive and more volatile, because there's less source of information. Therefore, 
that will move on the back of bits of information about any one of them 30 companies. How is the DAX correlated with Asia? I, I didn't, didn't know it was correlated. All the markets are correlated. And they were for, for 10 years. <laughs> right, okay, good man. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure it was a great time. I'm sure we know a lot of people. Uh, we have a lot of people in common. So, yes, all, all the markets are, are related, should I say. Um, they're not directly related. You have to find out your own relations. There's no two things that are directly correlated. The whole markets are correlated. So take into account you know, your FX, your commodities, market sentiment, what big companies and in, in, indices are doing. You know, you have to look at all these things. How many trades on average you typically place in a week? Good question. I mean, it all depends. You're going to get three opportunities a day to make money. You're going to get one cast iron opportunity a week to make really good money. You're going to have one opportunity a month to smash it. Yep. If you work around them principles, you won't go far wrong. If you're trading 10, 30 times in a day, that's too much, in my opinion. If you're trading between 5 and 10 times in a day and controlling your risk and size, you won't be too far wrong. Okay, if Asia's down, not necessarily. It doesn't mean that you know the DAX is going to go down. They're not directly correlated like that. Um, if there's a big move in Asia and it drops 5%, 6%, then sure, maybe the market's open a little bit lower. But then, look, think about investors. Maybe if Asia has gone down, they're going to go into the DAX as a bit of a safe haven and buy it back up. That's the way you've got to look at it. They could be, you know, conversely, um, you know, relational or correlated. Alright guys, any, any final questions? I always like coming on FX Street because I always get a little reminder at this point to tell me to hurry up. But, uh, you know, if you've got any questions before I do get to that point, just just let me know. Again, been very, very, uh, very good questions today. I'm really, uh, re really liking the, the interaction. Mano, what record does a retail trader to be taken on by a bank? <laughs> um, now that's a tough question. That is a tough question. You've got to be taken on to by, by a bank. You know, you need consistency. You, you need years, to be honest. Years. It's, um, it, it's, it's not easy at all. all. Right, guys. Well, that's been a very, very, um, very good session. I've really enjoyed that. Um, I've, I think it's time for me to wrap up. But uh, I'll be in, well. FX will be in contact with a list of my seminars. Uh, if you've got any feedback, send it through to them, guys. And it's been absolutely great. All right, guys. I hope you have a good evening. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon.